So welcome to another episode of Copper Plated Fun. This one, I'm going to take this really rusty S-Wing hatchet that has a bad handle, and I'm going to clean it up and copper plate it, and hopefully make it look really cool. That's the plan, at least. So you can see here that the handle is toast. This is the second hatchet that I actually purchased for the sole purpose of copper plating. The first one, though, the handle just wasn't bad enough for me to feel okay with cutting it off. So th that's a previous video. I actually did a quick cleanup of that hatchet and the leather handle, and then I did another quick video of me dipping it in Needs Foot Oil to refresh the, the leather. So on this one, uh, I, I did the same thing I did with the original um, well, the first S-Wing hatchet that I did, that I did the cashmere micarta on. Uh, you can see a link for that video below in the description. I just cut the leather down the spine, and this leather was pretty dried out also. And then cutting off these plastic bits was, was not too bad. I actually aimed the the knife to just to one side so that it would cut and drop just to the side as you can see there. And that worked pretty good. You can see how rusty it is. These handles rust a lot underneath that leather if you're not treating it and taking care of it and oiling it. And you can see these bits are really dried out and just aren't really worth doing much with anymore. So with that all off, it, I needed to get the end plate off. I wanted to maintain as much of the metal as possible, so I, I just filed the edges lightly with a, a saw file and cleaned it off. And with all the rust, it's really hard to read any of the wording there. I then soaked it in evaporust for 24 hours. And this time I wanted to try something different, so I set up my iPad, actually, to do a 24-hour time lapse. And what I like here is you can see kind of a cloud of, of rust kind of disperse off probably in the first probably six hours. After that, I did flip it in the morning and then let it continue for the rest of the day until I met the 24 hours before I took it out. Not quite as dramatic as like a time lapse maybe would be of vinegar, which, you know, bubbles and does all kinds of cool things. Maybe sometime I'll do that. But when it was done, I noticed this. I hadn't noticed this on other S-Wings. There seems to be a date of 11-18-74. And I'm not sure what that means. Maybe you guys can tell me, is that the date that it was cast or is that the date that the cast was made? I'm not sure. But... In any case, it indicates that this hatchet is perhaps around the same age as I am. <laughs> yeah. So, um, with that cleaned off, I, I wiped it down and then started filing away at the hatchet. And that wasn't quite doing as good of a job as a belt sander. So I took it to the belt sander to reprofile the edge and do some initial sanding on it. And now, because I've been doing so many restorations lately, a lot more than I used to before I started this channel, I've been going through sandpaper quite a bit. So um, prior to doing this video, I actually, I've been buying my belts for my belt sanders at uh, like the local Ace Hardware or Home Depot or Lowe's. And the prices for those, though they're not bad, they're not great. And search, a search on Amazon, I was able to find some really good prices and deals on belt sanders. And this video is really the first try at those. For my 1 inch, 1 by 42 inch belt sander, I actually got some progressive um, sandpaper or belts going from uh, like a 80 grit all the way up to 400 grit which really allowed me to do a lot more polishing or at least more progressive sanding on it and actually it's been really good for putting an edge 
on the axis. I also bought some progressive drums, drum sanding bits for my rotary tool and those worked great also. Um, I will put links for all of the different belts that I purchased for this and because I really do think that they're a great price and the quality seemed just as good as what I was getting at Lowe's and Home Depot and Ace Hardware. So um, it probably a chance if you're doing as much sanding with different tools as I do it would save you money. For those of you at least in in the US I'm not sure if it'll ship to Canada or to other other places. But um, the rotary tool actually really worked great for the curved edges on on this. And once that was done it was really like four hours of hand sanding then to try to get it polished. And this is something I'm still struggling at trying to get good at. Um, Austin, who I did a collaboration with last week, does a really great job at polishing. And maybe I just don't have the patience I need. I don't know. I, I progressively went up at different grades and tried to sand patiently till I could get all of the grooves from the previous grit away, um, but still it still wasn't quite polished. There were definite dings and, and divots and, and kind of waviness to to the hatchet itself that it was just hard to get out. But I was still quite happy with how it ended. And I really, because it was four hours of sanding, I really dried out my hands. And they started to get really weird. Um, I think actually the layer of skin on the outside of my hand died. <laughs> Because about two days after sanding this, it was like glue coming off because my skin was just so dead. I couldn't even open my iPhone anymore with my thumbprint. It was um, not there anymore after all the sanding. Maybe I should wear gloves sanding. But in any case, I took it up to 3,000 grit. Still, uh, it probably could have been done a lot better. I probably could have been more patient. But now it was time to clean it up because it's time to copper plate. And you can see in the background the, the muriatic acid. I mixed the muriatic, muriatic acid um, on my previous videos, um, actually on the hammer video, and I've kept it. It's a five to one mixture, um, five parts of uh, distilled water and one part muriatic acid. And this is muriatic acid that I got uh, at Home Depot or Lowe's, I actually don't remember, <laughs> one of those two. It's used for cleaning masonry. And um, I then have a copper plate that I've cut off of a, a, a copper cup that I actually got at the thrift store for a dollar. And I had seen it when I was thinking of doing this project. Originally I planned on just buying some copper pipe, but I saw this, a piece of solid copper cup, I knew I could cut with some tin snips a, a strip that I could put in and use that for the anode for this uh, project. I then have this 6 volt battery that uh, I connect the, the positive terminal to the anode and I just rigged up some like clips when I did the hammer originally. So hooking that up to the positive and then the negative I'm using this black marked wire that will then connect to the the material you want to copper plate in this case the hatchet and what happens here is and the reason the solution is green originally when I did the hammer the solution was clear and transparent um, the more that I've used this the more copper ions have deposited or been uh, released from the the copper anode into the solution. So because this pitcher was not quite wide enough I had to hold it. But you can see the bubbling there as it's starting to um, deposit the, the copper. And when it's first done it's kind of this dark reddish copper color that um, rinsing it first in water just to rinse off the acid a little bit before I go and start wiping it down. That darker red kind of wipes off and you can see 
you can see the copper then that's been deposited underneath it. So in between dips, I actually did um, three different dips of this. Between them, I would wipe them off and then brush them down with triple aught steel wool just to clean up and even out the, the layer. And then I would dip it again. So I did this three times total to get a nice coverage on, on the hatchet. So while I had it, I wanted to try a few other things. And uh, I really like carrying like silver half dollar, or not silver half dollars. I like to color, carry half dollar coins. And I, I wanted to see what would happen if I copper plated this. Um, it kind of reminds me of like um, Pepto-Bismol or uh, antacid tablet or something like that, bubbling in the water um, or in the solution here, not water. Um, and the the first coating it didn't take very well, but I end, I did end up doing a few more. It's slowly similar to when I did my Leatherman, my Leatherman Free P4. It took a few coats. The first few were really faint copper coatings, but as I got into those more coats, it it plated really well. I also plated the end plate here. I didn't clean this one up very much. I didn't want to polish it or sand it too much because it was. Um, pretty faint to read the text and I didn't want to destroy the little bit that did say S wing. But now that the copper plating's done, it's time to start finishing up the handle. This is my cardus that I created in my copper plated hammer video that you can see there. And I'm following the same process I did exactly for that hammer because I'm making a matching matching one. But if you want to see how that micarta was made, it was made from, from Carhartt jeans or pants, uh, some gray Carhartts that I've grown out of. Um, you can see that video. I will put a link in the description below. It's, it's neat to see how easy it is actually to make micarta that you can use on knives or if you wanted to do something like this on a S-wing hatchet handle and doing a stacked handle. You could also do the same kind of process if you wanted to make a stacked micarta handle on a knife with a hidden tang type knife, you could do that. And what I'm doing here is I'm just marking the, the center of, of each piece of these so that I can then drill out what's needed to be able to slide them up onto the handle. And I include this partially so you can see them all just stack up. My OCD likes to see the stacks move around in like a fast forward play. <laughs> I then took each one of these and drilled out three holes, one on each of those ends where the handle slides up inside and one down the center. And for those of you wondering why my drill press looks like a table saw, it's because it's a shop smith that essentially I just use it as a drill press. <laughs> so now I've got all those pieces drilled out and it's time to start cleaning them up. So you can see in the center there it's kind of a mess. They're not all precise and I need to clean up the center so that they will slide on. And there's my new uh, Leatherman P4 that is copper plated. Might as well give it a try. I found last time when I did the hammer that my Leatherman Wave, the saw on my Leatherman Wave, worked great for just clearing out the center of these different pieces so that it would slide on easily. And it worked. It performed just the same as the Leatherman Wave. 
probably because it is very similar. <laughs> I think the teeth are the same. It might be a slightly different shape, but essentially it's the same type of tool. So with that all done, because this handle, different than the hammer, this handle curves, so I needed to taper each piece so that I could make that curve. That's what I'm doing here. I'm just taking it to the belt sander and sanding it just slightly so it goes at an angle so that it will stack correctly along this curve. I think when you do a leather handle, the leather is a little more um, flexible so that you can actually make that curve without really reshaping the pieces. Although this handle, some of the pieces did look like they were tapered slightly. I'm now just using a five minute epoxy. I did a little bit at a time just so that it wouldn't dry out. And just epoxied up the handle. Put a little bit there at the beginning and then essentially I was just putting it on each piece as I stacked it on so that they would all stick together. I tried not to do too much around the handle itself. I wanted it to be able to have some give and take in there. I'm not sure if that will make a difference with vibration. There's a lot that said when with the hammer in the comments that with this micarta handle it won't be as comfortable of a handle to use in comparison to the leather and I I probably agree with that, but it would be interesting to test it out. I do think the micarta is a little more forgiving than maybe fiberglass is, but I'm not sure. So I, I let it sit up after gluing it. I, I gave it another hour, actually, uh, and then I took it to the bandsaw just to begin the initial shaping and to clear it off. And then I used my rasps uh, again to shape it. I found that, that this this cheese grater type rasp. I know there's a better word for it, and I'm sure you all will tell me. In fact, I will put a link to that tool in in the description. It works really well with wood handles when you're carving them and shaping them, and it works really well with this micarta also. It was then progressive grits of sanding from 100 grit all the way up to a 320 grit before I then applied axe wax. This is what I actually did the last time with the hammer and I really felt like it worked really well which is kind of funny because the axe wax is meant for wood and I think you can use it on leather but it really works well on this micarta. It really leaves a nice texture. I know I could take the micarta up to a higher polish but I like the durable finish that, that this um, axe wax gives to the handle. So I really, I, I've used Axe Wax now on a couple of my videos and a few projects and I've found that with wood handles the Axe Wax works best on an older handle, one that's already been treated with probably boiled linseed oil. It works as kind of a, a nice final more durable finishing after you've done lots of that, that um, boiled linseed oil. I'm really happy how it turned out. It really matches well with the hammer. The hammer's already starting to tarnish a little bit. We'll see how it uh, endures. I have used it quite a bit and that copper it is pretty resilient. This hatchet really is dedicated to all of you guys because really it was you guys who wanted to see this matching copper plated hatchet. The copper plated thing has actually been a lot of fun for me and when I first did this copper plated hammer there was a lot of you that asked for me to do a copper plated hatchet to match it and to go with it. Since I had that extra micarta that I hadn't used up and because it was just really cool. Um, it's been a lot of fun. When I finished the, the hammer I was just about to hit 5,000 subscribers and I reached out to a lot of you to continue to like and subscribe and really I got a great response. Now, three and a half weeks later, I'm finishing up now my copper plated hatchet at your request and we're almost at 10,000 subscribers 
and it's truly thanks to you guys. There will be some more copper in the future. I have a few other things I'd like to try. My 12-year-old son really likes the copper, and he wants me to copper plate everything. And truthfully, I'm kind of there also. It's pretty cool, which is why I did my new Leatherman. So um, look for opportunities to give those old things new life. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Turn on that notification bell, and we'll see you on the next video. Ciao. That's so cool. Look at that patina that's starting to develop. I wonder if it'll turn green. <laughs> cool. Ciao.